Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Here we go. We got Growing in Grace. It's a podcast that we've been doing this couple of old guys here, Mike and Joel. We've been doing this for <laughs> quite some time, and uh, we're ready to roll with some good news talk and whatever else happens to get thrown in there. How's it going, Mr. Cat? It's going. You know, I think sometimes people hear the word old and they sort of <laughs> consider that uh, insulting or, you know, uh, just negative. Uh, I'll carry it as a badge of honor, Joel, because there's a lot of people who don't get to claim that uh, old status. I mean, I don't know what people consider to be old. Is it, you know, in in your 50s, your 60s, your, you know, do you have to be 70 before you're really considered old? Uh, I suppose it's all a matter of perspective. I can remember being 20 years old looking at somebody in their early 40s, knowing (laughs) that they weren't really old. But they seemed old to me because they were twice my age. Right? Yeah, that's what so, I was about to say. It's like when you're younger, you think, you know, people in their 40s or 50s, that's that's old. But yeah, here we yeah, are. It, it seemed like a <laughs> lifetime away because for me it was. Uh, to have somebody twice your age at the age of 20, it just felt like that was a long ways away. Now, well, I remember now that in, is in my rearview mirror. Quite in, a, it's getting smaller. Back in the eight, back in the like late seventies and eighties, as a young child, I remember. I remember dreaming ahead to the year two thousand. How old <laughs> am I going to be in the year two thousand? Like, wow, you know that. You know, I felt, I'm going to be old, but I was only like in my thirties. <laughs> mm, mm. Anyway, so uh, here's one for you because you were talking about being able to get senior discount now at oh, yeah. some uh, <laughs> restaurants. Well, yeah. <laughs> years ago, um, I think before my my older brother was was old, <laughs> be- before he'd reached the place of a senior discount, mm-hmm. he pulled into a drive through and was ordering, and got up to the window and they told him the amount, and he said how come it's cheaper than than i expected and they said well we gave you the senior discount <laughs> <laughs> so i guess his voice just sounded old i but must be well and i got one that goes along with that this i this is probably i was i had to have been in my early 40s um maybe even before that this is quite some time ago but i was in mcdonald's and i was actually inside one of the rare times i actually went inside and I asked for whatever I asked for, and they said, would you like the senior discount? Would you like your senior discount? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm not even anywhere close to that. But, and then, so that was kind of the opposite of, of what I usually get from people, because most of my life, people have thought that I'm younger than what I am. I look, I've always looked younger than what I am, but I suppose I've, uh, I've had gray hair, though, since I was like, 15 or 16 I've had, no and then that's true like little stray ones but then and then so in the, in an elevator a few years ago um somebody who i knew at work um he accused me of coloring my hair because i had i had really growing up jet black hair i mean i had really black hair and uh he would see these um stray you know, gray hairs in there. And so he thought that I was covering up gray hair, but that was just my natural color. That's when I was developed, you know, the gray hairs were getting more salt and it was getting more salt and pepper, um, at that time, but it was just my natural color, but he thought I was trying to hide my grays, which I've never done no matter yeah, it, which age almost, I've been. As you get older, it's almost the opposite of like when you were 18 or whatever, trying to buy beer underage. <laughs> and it's like, if you, if you were to put out an ID and and you were underage it's almost like somebody it's it's like the clerk were to say something like um oh you you, i don't need to see your id right (laughs) it's kind of the opposite of what you're dealing with now would you like the senior discount exactly yeah it's either it's either an insult or it's like oh wow well thanks for the compliment (laughs) yeah so if you were to go to a restaurant where the the senior discount age was 60 which you were not at yet Mm -mm. um 
and you were going to try to get it, you're, you're probably doing what you were doing when you were 18 years old. You're just hoping that they don't <laughs> right. ask for your ID. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, can I see your ID? Uh, <laughs> give them a fake. Uh, I got to go get a fake ID that, that shows that I'm 65. <laughs> shows I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> get a picture of Dick Van Dyke or something on there. But... Um, all right. Uh, let's talk about what are we talking about? Uh, uh, oh yeah. Well, kind of oh. Oh, bouncing hey, off last we, we week. Co- yeah, we kind of talked about some of this a little bit last week, but let, let's let's go further with it. Yeah. But, well, I would because yeah, after we got done with last week's, we were talking a little bit, and there's this, you know, kind of when you come to Christ, you know, the whole purpose of life in Christ is is not about doing it's not about being religious it's not about you know trying to do all the stuff right to get close to god but yet that's what the church in so many places anyway that's what they've made it to be it's all about behavior i mean you go and you listen to sermons you uh, listen to radio programs christian radio programs or christian tv programs and it seems like they're always focused on doing 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 you got to do all this stuff and um, I mean, I was talking with you about how back when I really, I mean, I've been a believer all my life, but when I first started really like walking with the Lord, um, that's just a term that I used, uh, um, I threw away all of my tapes and records that, that, you know, that dates me a little bit is <laughs> before the age of CD. Well, not quite before the age of CDs, because I did have some CDs, but um, I threw away a lot of the tapes and records, um, be- and I wouldn't watch TV. I just thought it was evil, evil. I thought it was and, like, and, and the reason you thought that is because probably somebody told you that, right? That's that's the gist that I got from the church. You can't listen to that secular stuff. You sh- and it's all it's all bad, and and um, and so and and, and so to kind of replace all that or as an alternative to what those things brought into my life i started listening to a lot of christian radio and christian um well i didn't have a whole lot of christian tv but christian radio christian music and nothing wrong with that in fact both you and i cap we come from a christian radio background we've both done the christian radio thing christian music and all that so not saying that that stuff is bad but when you use that stuff you know, as, as a basis for your relationship with God, that's when it's a little bit troublesome because, and, and another thing I was telling you about was <laughs> back in the day, there were uh, not the radio station that you and I worked on, but there was another local Christian radio station. And in the morning they would have a uh, half an hour of focus on the family, a half an hour of Chuck Swindoll. And then I think there were two other programs after that. I can't remember for sure, but I remember religiously listening and i mean religiously i don't mean like it was in my heart to do it but it was like a religious thing that i felt obligated to do i felt like i had to listen to that two-hour chunk of radio i'm pretty sure that's what it was i know for sure it was swindoll and focus on family and i just you know it's like if i felt like well i want to go do something else now I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't tear myself away because I felt obligated to do that. That was a religious thing in, in me that I felt like maybe it was helping me to get closer to God or it was maintaining my good standing with him. And, that, you know, what a bunch of um, silliness that is because, uh, it, again, nothing wrong with listening to that stuff and listening to Christian music. There, there wasn't necessarily a, a huge... Um, mix of Christian music back then, like of good stuff, but there was, there was some good Christian music back then. And, uh, I got hooked on Petra, uh, Striper was big in my life. Uh, Rich Mullins, um, you know, artists like that. I really loved, you know, listen to a lot of that stuff. Uh, but it became like, I can't listen to secular music. I can't watch secular TV. Maybe you could watch a sports program or something like that. But anyway, it all became very religious stuff for me. And I think there are a lot of people that maybe it's not these particular things. Maybe it is these things, or maybe it's something else that is keeping you um, in a religious mindset um, rather than just letting it all go and just knowing that 
it's not about your performance, your behavior, what you listen to, what you watch. Um, it's, it's really about getting to know God, uh, as a person. Um, we were, we talked a few weeks ago about, you know, it's not about, um, about, you know, God revealing himself to you. That's, that's really what it's about him, him, the person God and not about all this Bible reading and, and stuff. Again, nothing wrong with that, but it's about knowing him personally. Yeah, it, what you're talking about there is, is is your effort to try to get closer to God, not realizing you were already as close to God as you were ever going to get. You just hadn't been informed about that. You weren't knowledgeable about that. Uh, you were trying to get, you know, clean, and the cleaner you got, you thought, mm -hmm. would bring you that much closer to God, uh, make yourself more acceptable to God, uh, make sure that you're avoiding any anger that God might have, to have towards you, uh, a, a variety of different things. It, it just all became part of your religion. Um, there's a whole variety of, of different approaches when it comes to uh, people trying to get to God instead of recognizing that God got to us. Um, mm -hmm. And so things like getting rid of your music, not watching certain TV shows, don't go to certain movies, um, like you said, there, there's, sometimes there, there's a benefit to certain things, but when it becomes a, a religion like that, I mean, it, it's just all based on uh, you trying to do something to, to move God on, on the chessboard a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, the spiritual chessboard. Um, and I went through some of the same things probably a little before you, I, I'm thinking. so Because you're older. I, yeah. So yeah when, well, <laughs> when I rededicated my life, Joel, um, you know, quote unquote, rededicated my mm -hmm. life. Because uh, I, I mentioned before that I, I came to faith in Christ at, at, as a child, uh, but, you know, had some wild oats in there uh, and uh, in, in my late teens and rededicated because I, I felt like I wasn't even saved anymore, right? So had to kind of start over, had to make a new commitment. Uh, and by making that new commitment or covenant, if you will, with God that I will try harder, I will do better, and I will you know, submit, submit my life to you in any way that I possibly can. Um, and, and now my relationship with God, even my eternity is going to be based on that. Um, so by getting rid of stuff that other people were telling me were from the devil, um, I also threw, I didn't have a, I didn't have an album burning party. I just quietly, <laughs> uh, threw a bunch of albums, uh, some of which I wish I still had right <laughs> Threw threw them into a garbage bag and just got rid of them, you know, wiped my hands clean and, and started over again. So when, when Grace came along uh, more than 10 years later after that rededication, Grace came along and uh, as you and I have talked many times here on the podcast, it, it, it just changed everything and we began to see things we never saw before. Even in the middle of our dedication to God for all those years, we, we didn't really see the gospel as it was meant to be. Um, we kind of just got sucked into everybody else's religion uh, or their perception of it or their, their point of view. Um, and so when grace came along, um, everything began to change for me, not just theologically or seeing the Bible differently and some of that. But I began to realize, because as a younger person in this um, self-righteous mode of, of self-dedication to God, uh, one of the things I would try to do, because I was told to try to do this uh, in order to be more spiritually uh, sharp uh, and, and close to God, was to pray a lot. Um, you were talking about your radio block program with Swindoll, Focus on the Family. I, I'm wondering if that second hour was uh, a radio show called Quiet Time, where there was just nothing on the radio. <laughs> what, a, what a great concept. Uh, just It was just dead air. Um, because, you know, we were told, oh, you got to have your quiet time. Uh, and, and other people told me, well, you need to pray an hour a day. So there was a time where I was trying, at least trying to pray for an hour a day, thinking that it would just, you know, make me more of a spiritual giant. Um, and, but I began to realize it in, in my grace journey. Uh, and, and I think it was God who brought it to my attention that, and, and I want to be careful about what I say here. We, we have talked about this over the over the years uh, a little bit. So I, I, I hope you'll try to relate to what I'm saying here. I'm not saying not to pray. Let me just throw that out there. Uh, but I began to realize that the, the, the efforts that I was putting into that sort of thing, like prayer, um, 
began to subside a little bit. And I found myself in, in, in a place where I wasn't spending as much formal time in prayer or what some people might call quiet time. Uh, and that may consist of a number of different things for different people. Uh, but I, I felt as though I was constantly in a, a connection with God throughout my day, doing the things that I do throughout my day, having nothing to do with religion or spiritual things. I just felt this connection as if I were always in an interactive fellowship and, and I didn't need to pick up the prayer phone for a while and then hang it back up again and say, amen, which in the Greek means goodbye, by the way, <laughs> that's a joke. Um, and so, you know, but that's how sometimes how we treat prayer or even sometimes when we go to church, remember when we used to have people tell us, well, you should dress up for church because God gave you his best. So you should give him your best. So, so now we've shrunk that God down to me wearing a tie to church. Um, it's just silly stuff that, um, we get caught up with, right? Yeah, I remember sitting in a. Uh, you old. You remember the old Shakey's restaurant that we used to oh, have here yeah. in town? Mojo Potatoes, baby. Oh yeah, good stuff. And there was there was one on um, University Avenue here in Waterloo, and, or maybe that was Cedar Falls. But um, across the street there was this church called the Heartland Vineyard Church. And at the time, it's <laughs> it's something that you and I have a history with too. But before you and I were even any part of that, they uh, um, they were meeting in a in, in a place called the Chalet Center, which was across the street from uh, the Shakey's. And I was sitting there with my church friends. Uh, this is from my, with my religious church friends. And <clears throat> across the street, you could see these people going into the church wearing shorts and t-shirts and sandals. <laughs> and uh, I remember one of the, um, one of my friends, uh, dads um so I, I mean i was adult at this time but he but he said yeah can you just i can't remember his specific words but he was really down on how those people were dressed <laughs> because they mm -hmm. didn't have their sunday best on and he said exactly the same thing you know the, god gave his best to us why can't we give our best to him you know with what we wear to church i mean I can't believe how I fell for some of that stuff back then. It's hard to imagine Adam and Eve saying something. Yeah, like really. That. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> how come they're not wearing figs like us? Um, <laughs> but um, on as we wrap up, remember uh, the whole thing with back masking with music, and um, yeah. so they would. Yeah, I remember it well. They would. They would. Many many sermons I heard on that <laughs> on the television. So. A, an artist would, ha would have a song on an album and they would play it backward. You know, the, these religious people would play it backwards and say they could hear a message from Satan in if you played that music backwards. And um, anyway, you can look into all that stuff. But I remember Petra's response to that. Remember Judas Kiss and how yeah, the song they started? In their, uh, uh, they put it in there purposely. Yeah, so they started the song with that, ah, you know, something like that. You play it backwards. And I love it. It says, what are you looking for the devil for when you ought to be looking for the Lord? And it's, it's you know, just that the whole point is that just come on, people. Just quit looking for the devil and everything and just realize that you're in Christ and life is good in him. You are in him. Like you said, he came to us. It's not about our religious efforts trying to get to him. But he came to us. He justified us. He came to us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us, Paul says. And, and so we can rest and relax in what he has done for us and, and look to that and not our religious activities and obligations. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.